Hey guys, what's up? It's Pseudo Pluto here, and today I'm installing this hardware TPM into my my desktop, and I'm gonna be go o going over the how and the why, and let's start with the how. So, I have an MSI motherboard, uh, B550M, AMD um, Ryzen system, and so typically with TPM modules, you need to make sure that you actually have a TPM header. So I have one right here. Uh, JTPM1 and as you can see it's 12 pins with uh, the second key on the bottom uh, sorry the second pin uh, from the left on the bottom being actually like blocked off and that corresponds with the key on our actual module here um, so it'll actually be installed like this right because then this will line up with the actual pins on the motherboard so now that we've got the orientation, uh, it's an important thing to talk about compatibility. So not all motherboards and TBM modules are compatible with themselves. Uh, there's actual pin layout. So some some motherboards um, are 12 pins, but the layout is different. It's like reversed. Um, some use 14 pins, and then there's also the different in standards. So for example, this motherboard uses a 12 pin SPI standard uh, in a certain layout. And so that's why I got a 12-pin uh, SPI uh, module. And it just so happens that MSI makes modules that are compatible with MSI motherboards. Uh, usually you have to go based off of motherboard brand for choosing a module to slot into your motherboard. But installing it is very simple. You just take this module and you just pop it in on there, making sure that, as, as I mentioned, right, that the blocked off pin, uh, sorry, the, the blocked off slot aligns with the missing pin on the header on the motherboard. So I'm going to go ahead and install this and then uh, we'll jump in the OS to see what the hardware looks like and I'll show you screenshots from the BIOS. Okay, yeah, so here's how you set up the hardware TPM from the BIOS. So what you want to go is go into security and you want to go into trusted computing. Uh, you want to do security device support enabled. Uh, AMD FTPM, this is the firmware TPM, the basically software TPM that's on the CPU. You want to set that to be disabled. Uh, device select, you can do auto, uh, but we can also just do TPM2. Uh, since we know that we have a TPM2 hardware module, uh, we can do PCR bank enabled, TPM state enabled, pending operation. Uh, we can set that to be clear, just have everything in a default case. Uh, and then we want to keep all of these enabled, basically. So yeah, once we set those, we can just save it in our BIOS and reboot. Okay, yeah, so once you uh, install the TPM module and you change those settings in the BIOS, uh, you can verify um, everything is working correctly when you do uh, uh, systemd decrypt and roll TPM device list, and you should see that you have a physical device. Um, what you can also do is message grab TPM um, all the setup stuff here so uh, here we have the actual um, device logs from boot so everything's working correctly um, so if you already had crypt uh, set up for your uh, FTPM your your full disk encryption unlock give it some bogus PCRs so I just did this right uh, and it'll wipe the existing uh, PCRs um, registration. And then you can do whatever registration you want to do. Uh, the main thing is to keep this white slot um, TPM2 or the actual syntax or like the official syntax is like that. But you'll basically do it once to wipe all the all the keys registered. And then you'll do it again with the actual uh, TPM like registry values that you actually want to use. Um, by default, SystemD boot uses only seven. Uh, but yeah, so why did I end up um, getting a hardware TPM? Uh, so yeah, basically the, the main thing that kicked it off was this. Um, there, there was a number of BIOS updates for my board to address issues related to AMD's software TPM implementation. Um, I believe both on Windows and Linux, there was stuttering due to the FTPM implementation released from Linus saying like, it's just not a good implementation of TPM. It's cheap, it's like around like $20, $30. Um, 
this is the way to check it. You just go for like your motherboard uh, brand and you do like accessories. And you'll see I went for this one, uh, which is supported by the AMD uh, B550 boards. And yeah, there, there's some other um, thoughts on whether you should use uh, software or hardware TPM. One interesting one, and I'll link this article, is that the software implementations are not open source, so you don't know how secure they are. Meanwhile, dedicated TPM chips um, are a bit more validated, but they are prone to like real world attacks where they actually have your device. And I think the most damning thing is that most dedicated um, like workstation class AMD laptops and stuff have dedicated uh, TPM chips instead of relying on the software implementation on consumer products. Um, and for example, my ThinkPad has dedicated TPM chip. Um, the servers that I use for work have dedicated TPM chips. Uh, I would just feel more comfortable about having the more hardware-based approach than having something in software where, you know, I would need BIOS updates to address bug fixes. Or there's, there's you know, like history showed, like where a buggy FTPM implementation would cause stuttering uh, when you're using your OS because of the implementation. That the fact that the TPM functionality lives on the CPU and it's being done via software. Uh, so I don't know. It's kind of a nerdy thing. Uh, it's a cheap and easy solution to some immediate and some future problems, and it's also pretty fun to do. I definitely want to learn more about TPM. I think there's like some C examples, so I kind of want to start programming with it. Yeah, just having like a dedicated like hardware photography device seems kind of fun to. Uh, have and understand so that's also part of it i want to like experiment more if you have a board that supports a tpm header you might uh, be interested in picking up a dedicated tpm chip instead of relying on software tpm like amd's ftpm but yeah this is pseudo pluto uh, i'll see you guys later thank you